Check out this video. Cops arrested two men for allegedly beating a 75 year old man, walking his dog, all while stealing several motorcycles. You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. Cops say the victim was on his way to open his business at 430 in the morning when the man allegedly saw Justin St. Hill and Tristan Livingston stealing five motorcycles from a neighboring business. So he threatened to call the cops. That's when he got knocked to the ground and dragged around. Police say he was hit in the head with a metal pipe and the suspects held him down until they finished their burglary. The suspects are now charged with burglary, assault and kidnapping. The victim is recovering still from his injuries again after the trauma of being assaulted in the head with a lead pipe and then again punched and kicked and dragged over to the side of the building by his throat and then pushed inside by the van. Now, it happened on Jericho Turnpike in New Hyde Park back in August. The two men from Brooklyn are currently being held on $125,000 cash bail. And Hurricane Milton is barreling towards Florida's Gulf Coast. Orlando, Tampa, Sarasota, and Southwest Florida airports are all closed. And multiple flights out of MacArthur are canceled. You know, just Bill Corbell is with us now to tell us what to expect overnight. Bill. It is a bad storm. In fact, I think this one's going to go down in the history books as the worst one to hit the west coast of Florida in a little over 100 years. It's huge. It's affecting most of the state right now with the focus through the middle portions. It has been consistently a Cat 4, once a Category 5 storm. We had some gusts of winds of 200. Winds have come down, but the storm has gotten larger as the center will pass somewhere very close to Tampa, a little bit south of it overnight, then offshore near Cape Canaveral and out to sea after that as it weakens. But it has a trifecta of very difficult things to contend with. One is the torrential rains. There'll be flooding rains across central and northern Florida. I'll show you how much in a second. You can see how it's going to move to the northeast fairly steadily and fairly quickly. Not much going down to the south except for the strong winds and then offshore tomorrow morning. And as it does, again, the winds will start to subside a bit and it will move out to sea. And no, it's not coming up here. It's going to stay out to sea and move well offshore so we don't have to worry about that. This is amazing. The yellow area, that's the area of tropical storm force winds of at least 39 miles per hour. That's about 400 miles from near Key West all the way up to the Georgia border. Even the area of hurricane force winds. The orange you see, that's about uh, over 100 miles or close to it, 75 miles. So the winds will affect a big portion of central Florida. They will diminish. This may be a little overdone, I think, by tomorrow morning as it moves offshore. The winds be more like that 74 to 100 mile per hour range. Coastal flooding, storm surge. This is the killer in storms like this. Look at these numbers. Think about it. your house has a, a ceiling about eight feet for most of the rooms. We're talking about flooding somewhere in the 8 to 12 foot range uh, for a good portion of the area from Fort Myers all the way up to almost Spring Hill. That's going to be the major player in this storm. We also have the heavy rain. Of course, we have the winds, but the rain, that band north of the storm, we could see over eight inches of rain out of that thing as we go through the overnight period. So what's going to happen next? The storm will move across and move out of there, but you can see again, it's affecting most of the state, and I think uh, this one's going to go down in history, Ken, as a storm that they will remember for many, many years. Very serious stuff. Thank you, Bill. Now, the Hale Site Fire Department is collecting donations for hurricane victims. We have an airlift going on. We have uh, a plane that we procured through a local business owner, and we'll also be trucking some, uh, a lot of the goods down on trucks by uh, local people who live here in the community. Now, the chief says they're looking for dry goods, toiletries, and pet food. The department did a similar drive for people impacted by Hurricane Harvey in Houston back in 2017. And Donald Trump is holding a rally at Madison Square Garden. Campaign officials say it's scheduled to kick we off on October 27th. This will be Trump's second country. rally in New York we City. The former president had a rally at the Nassau Coliseum just a few weeks back. And new stores have been announced for the former Sunvet Mall in Holbrook. Nordstrom Rack, Sephora, and Mogu Modern Chinese Kitchen are among the new tenants that will open up on the property. The shops on Sunrise Highway is undergoing an $87 million redevelopment plan to convert the mall into an open-air shopping center. And the United States Postal Service is getting some high-tech upgrades in Hicksville. 
peak season is coming with, uh, that means more packages will be in the thousands. And this machine takes care of it in an hour where I would have to have so many man hours. Now the new sorting machine can process more than 4,000 packages an hour. The facility also got a new fleet of electric vehicles. And first in Newsday, the Islanders Cal Clutterbuck will be at the season opener tomorrow night, but not on the ice. The team's right wing will be there as a studio analyst for MSG. Now Clutterbuck, who joined the team in 2013, is still an unrestricted free agent. The team takes on the Utah Hockey Club Thursday night at UBS Arena. Seven bedrooms in a courtyard. This Latin American charmer could soon be yours. Ariel Dollinger has a story you'll see only in Newsday. This is a Colombian courtyard house. The 15,000 square foot home in West Hills reflects its owner's Latin American heritage by integrating the outdoor and indoor spaces. We have a central courtyard and the whole house revolves around the courtyard. Angela Duque and Andres Patino moved from Colombia to the United States with their four children for the turn of the century. The family lived here for several years before taking on the renovation project that would transform the property into what it is today. A seven bedroom, 11 bathroom retreat on one acre, now on the market for $5.25 million. One member of the design team was Colombian architect Juan Pablo Ortiz, who came up with the concept. On Google Earth, Ortiz saw that most houses in the neighborhood had large green swaths and smaller structures. He gave us a proposal and he said, why don't we do it backwards? We're gonna, do, we're gonna bring the outdoors indoors. All year around, we have this garden because the house, the double height, covers from the north wind. So we always have green, we always have this green inside the house. An indoor-outdoor bathroom attached to the primary bedroom is a continuation of this concept. Wow. This is very common in our country to have ba open bathrooms, to have gardens in the bathrooms. So when you think about it, how can you adapt those ideas to the New York weather? Until it's possible here. Yes. We're coming from cities that are in summer all year round. So when you come to New York and you live in New York and you have these winters and you start missing the green, you say, how can I integrate more green into our house? Among the home's playful elements are a bed swing I spent too much time on, a movie theater, a gym, a cafe setup, and hanging telephones. Oh, and a car filled with flowers in the middle of a party room. So you can play with it, so kids come and have fun and take pictures. For Newsday TV, I'm Ariel Dollinger. Now to read more about unique homes on Long Island, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. Now let's take a look at your Long Island weather meteorologist Bill Corbell is with us. Bill. We have some more very nice early fall weather coming up here on the island tomorrow. Lots of sunshine. Can be breezy and chilly though, especially in the morning. We'll top out in the lower 60s. Weather-wise, we look good, basically dry to continue. A couple of showers around earlier on Wednesday, but they'll move away. And as we go through the next few days, high pressure, dry air moves in. There you go through Thursday night. And we're gonna continue this right on into the weekend, in fact, uh, at least through Saturday with dry weather and cool weather too. Some of the chilliest nights we've seen in a while. So for tonight, we're gonna to drop it down into the, um, oh, upper 40s, low 50s, and you can see we warmed up briefly on Saturday, then some real chilly weather comes in the start of next week. As for rainfall, we haven't had much, have we, in a long time? Maybe a couple of showers Sunday, otherwise the dry trend continues. So again, tonight will be mainly clear, breezy, chilly out there, temperatures mid-upper 40s for much of the area with northwesterly breezes, and tomorrow, as I said, somewhere around 62 degrees, lots of sun, breezy and cool. Take a look now at our extended forecast, and you'll see that we have basically very nice weather going right on into the middle of next week, but it does get kind of cool around here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Long Island weather is brought to you by PTRC.
You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us.